If you have been online at all recently, you've probably heard of this Hindenburg omen that everyone's talking about that's triggering and has predicted every crash that has ever happened. So, like always, I'll, uh, I'll chat with you guys about it and we'll really break it down. If you haven't heard about this, you're probably not as terminally online as I am and, and good for you. But uh, this is one of those things just like I did the video earlier in the week about how the media was completely misreporting what Michael Burry's actual portfolio was. It's good to see a lot of those posts have now gotten community noted. So uh, the word is getting out there that, you know, there's some misinformation there. This Hindenburg Omen is kind of the same thing. It is true. It has predicted every major crash uh, since I think 1980. However, there's more to the story. So let's get into that right now, right here. So right scary scary name first of all uh, good naming kind of a funny story when i was reading about it i guess there is a, a physics teacher who was blind and following the markets at some point via the radio and then discovered this kind of indicator from there and actually has does a pretty good job of predicting potential downturns right it did the top of 2022 it also did the top here right before the really flush that we had for you know, call it Liberation Day or whatever we were looking at there. But what is this? So first we'll break down what it is, and then I'll talk about some potential problems with it and whether or not we really need to kind of run for the hills immediately. So right off the bat, um, the S&P 500 or the market has to be over the 50-day moving average. The idea is you want to predict crashes or, or really bearish events in an uptrending market. So we have that right now. Next is this lower indicator. And this is essentially the green line on the bottom here is the new highs markets in the S&P 500. And then right here, the red line is the new lows. And what you want to see is a big spike in new highs, and then a big spike in new lows, right? The exact math, I don't think really matters, but the spirit of it and the spirit of it is that you're looking for a surge higher in new highs and a surge lower in new lows. And what that signifies is that under the hood, even though the market is above the 50 day moving average and holding strong, that it's a bifurcated market and something we've been talking about a lot on this channel. You've got some sectors that are really, really hot and doing very well, and some sectors that are really poor and, and kind of been breaking down for a while. You know, just thinking about, you know, some of these retail companies versus like quantum computers or something like that. A, a market that is split, a market that not everything is making new highs. Like if you go back to this part of the chart, you can see the histogram here. There's a lot of new highs and not very many new lows. That would be considered more, I guess, healthy than, than what's happening here. So that's the second part of the Hindenburg Omen. And then the third part is that breath starts to deteriorate. So you get an overall push down in breath indicator, which means on average, the losers start to outpace the winners, which you can kind of see on the chart right here, but I added this one as well. So you start to get this kind of bleed a little bit lower here on breath. So we have a split market and all of a sudden now most stocks have started to turn over. Those three together create this Hindenburg omen. And you can see again predicted here, you know, 2018, it did 2008, it did the 1987 crash, it did the year 2000. I also, like I talked about, did the top of 2021 and a lot of these things. Now, what actually is that scary? Should we sell everything? Should we, should we kind of lose our mind here? And my argument is no, because although it predicted all of these crashes, it also predicted a lot of things that weren't crashes, right? So the first example that happened kind of right off the bat, a couple of these things is, you know, taking a look here at September 11th, 2021. If you had sold then, a ripper of the market, right? 21%. And if you look one year later, in most of these cases, we're higher, right? 2021, it did predict the top, and then we had the bear market for a couple of years. But in 75% of cases, a year later, it's wrong. And in over half the cases, because it, you know, it triggered half, you can't look at all of these together, because it predicted it once here, and then predicted these wins. So anyway, 25% of the time it's right, 75% of the time it's wrong. So I think this is getting more traction because of the name, because of the Hindenburg Omen, and the fact that it's predicted all of these markets. So kind of looking at it, we're saying that the Hindenburg Omen predicts the top of all markets in the same way a really sensitive smoke detector predicts every fire that will happen in your house. It also predicts every time you burn the toast. So if you're seeing this and people are kind of pushing it, I don't think this is you know dishonest in the way the whole Michael Burry thing was. What I think is, is that this is legitimate 
It's just people aren't going into the detail that I just went into you there. So some may look at this and say, hey, this is a yellow warning sign. Right? The yellow warning sign is flashing in the markets to say, okay, I am going to start to pay attention a little bit closer to the market to see if price action overall deteriorates. Now, I am I'm filming this on uh, Friday morning. So by the time you see this, a lot of the day may have gone by, but just let's take a look at what I think matters the most, which is always price action here, right? And we have pulled back. We've had a nice kind of healthy little pullback of about 3% or so from highs here on the SPY and then more on the Qs because it's a lot of large cap tech that's selling. It's about 4% or so on the Qs. I think that this is just a kind of a normal healthy pullback and I kind of gave out the ghost here, but already... This line right here is the anchored view app from this last major crash that we had. This was the China, I'm going to tear off China. And then remember on Sunday, he said, oh, no, I'm not. Everything's going to be fine. Uh, and if you look at that, we're roughly at that price. And that's also, again, roughly these prior highs right here. So we do have a big zone in this area. What would start to worry me is to see a little bit of a sell, a bounce, and then a failure on that bounce, right? A pullback is just a pullback until you get that lower high and then a bit of a sell-off. That to me is when I'll go, okay, maybe it's time for me personally to raise just a couple, raise some cash, uh, that kind of thing. And as, as systematic traders, again, all of the systems we have, these are all back tests that go back 25 years of data. So showing every single crash. And this gives me a bit of a good feeling where I know that we've survived all of these. Every back test I've done, right? It's when the market enters a bear market, I will likely give back some of the equity that I've made this year. That's going to happen. It's just, you know, a matter of when, right? Not if. The question that I have is that if I stay systematic, eventually there will be new equity highs again. And that's what we're lo always looking for is just, you know, can we outpace on the way down, lose a little bit less in the market? And can we recover quicker than the market and make new all-time highs? So this doesn't have me panicked at all. I'm going to do the same thing this weekend that I do every weekend. And that is give 40 different trade ideas to that are all from these particular systems to all stats edge pro members we are going to trade them next week if there's a hindenburg omen or if there's not a hindenburg omen and knowing that our systems will adapt if things get a little bit a little bit dicey me looking at the price action right this doesn't look great when the market's down you know six five six days in a row but I'm certainly not going to short or bail out of anything here. I'm going to continue to kind of make these trades, right? VLO, we bought some of VLO yesterday as it broke out of this range. So energy, even with the market selling off, this energy company is doing very well, right? We, we got a nice little trade out of this so far. There will be signs of strength. And that is what we are looking for as systems traders is that if things, if this is one of the 25% of the time, that this Hindenburg Ohm comes true, then we will adapt, right? The systems will show us where the strength is. So if you're seeing this stuff and, you know, again, it's a very scary name, you're getting a little bit worried. I just wanted to take a second, like I always do, kind of break it down and say, hey, this is what it is. This is what it means. This is what it's looking at uh, in particular. And this is the predictive win rate of it. And if that helped, you know, give a like and a follow and all those things that YouTubers ask you to do all the time. And until next time, get away from the screens.